Hi, this is a short video on uh, my test on the Insta 361R for side-by-side off-roading, and I've also included a tutorial. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, find this useful and enjoy it. This is a good alternative to uh, the GoPros. Okay, before I get into the video here, I'm going to go ahead and give you a bottom line up front in case uh, folks don't want to watch the whole video. Uh, so here are the pros and the cons I found after using this for about a week. Um, so the pros, uh, with the 360 module, you can literally look anywhere around your vehicle, including multi-view. You can have, you can be looking at yourself and be looking forward at the same time in split views. Um, you can pick out rocks as you go by them. Um, you can uh, look at your front wheel if you have it mounted right, and you can see that. And then just pan over and be looking at the top of a mountain if you want to, or your buddy that's in another side-by-side -side next to you. Um, it uh, offers a lot of capability there. The um, artificial intelligent features in this, or the AI features, are really good. Um, you can click in the multi-view mode on the app, and you can actually have it generate a selfie self-view um, under the multi-view feature, which is kind of cool. The image quality is really good. I'm surprised. You know, This is like a 5.7K 360 sensor. Um, if you buy the twin edition, which is what I have, you also get a 4K sensor module that you can put on there. With that 4K sensor module, it's uh, pretty close on par with, uh, with the GoPro. I think I like the GoPro colors a little better as far as resolution. Um, and they actually make a, um, an Insta360 one-inch Leica module that you can buy. It's about 300, about 250, I think, dollars. Um, and that would even be better than a GoPro as far as image quality. I don't have that, but I, I do have the twin edition, so I have both the 360 and the, and the and the 4K module, and both work pretty well. Um, the, uh, the other thing I liked is it uses the GoPro style mounts. Uh, it includes a cage that you use uh, to, uh, to, to um, attach it to things, and it just uses standard GoPro mounts for that. The design's very modular. Like I say, you buy that twin edition, and you you're essentially have a GoPro and a 360 camera all in one package, and you can switch back and forth between those really easy, um, depending on what you want to do. Um, the other thing is the iPhone app is very powerful with it. It also includes a, a fairly good desktop. Um, studio, so folks that are that work in like you know Adobe Premiere, or if you're working with big files and find it difficult to do on the on the phone app, um, that's that's uh, you, that's an alternative you can do as well. So the downside, um, the the audio recording is terrible out of the camera, and you can hear that for some of my video clips. Um, it only gives you a couple of options for how you you select voice or action focus. Um, it didn't do anything to to help pick up the correct vehicle noise or to eliminate vehicle noise or um, it just it, does, it sounds kind of horrible. So um, you could get an external mic for this thing um, if you wanted to, but I, I just didn't like the uh, the, uh, the audio straight out. Um, the other thing I didn't like about it is it doesn't have built-in GPS. Um, you can use your cell phone to actually capture if you if you start and stop the camera using the Insta360 application. That application will actually pull the GPS data from your phone and encode it into the video. But you got to be running the application to do that. Um, so I didn't like that. The other option, and I didn't get a chance to test this, but I did go ahead and buy it, is they make a GPS remote control. It's actually a little button that you can start recording, stop recording, um, and it, it has built-in GPS in it. And so it will actually collect the GPS data and, and, and um, add it to your, your video. So that's that looked, that looked pretty cool. I went ahead and got that, but I didn't get a chance to test it for this video. Um, the other thing I didn't like is the desktop software doesn't generate the GPS overlays for the app. Um, whereas the the uh, are, are for the um, for the video scene, whereas the app version of the software does do that. Uh, the other thing I didn't like is it only it doesn't give you a lot of templates with those overlays. You basically only have one overlay style that you can pick. It's kind of a modern looking style, and if you don't like it, too bad. Um, I hope in the future they they give you options on that. I'm guessing they will. Um, the stabilization via the app software is done in post processing. It's not done on camera. Uh, so when you're either running the app in the your iPhone, your cell phone app or you're running a desktop app, um, it, it, that's where it's going to do the stabilization. You can cut it on and off. It's actually really good, but it's not as good as GoPro. It doesn't give you as many settings on, on stabilization levels. You can either have it on or off, and that's pretty much it. But when it's on, it actually does a pretty good job. Um, the apps have a steep learning curve. It took me a while to figure out how to use that cell phone app. It's not that intuitive. Once you figure it out, it's okay, and, and, you, and it's easy to remember. But it's kind of figuring that um, that out initially. It's that's really tricky. So expect the learning curve, and then um, the scene stitching on the 320, uh, the 360 view module, it's good, but it's not perfect. There are times where I've panned around, and you can see kind of a fuzzy edge um, where the two halves meet together. And there's different settings. I didn't play around 
uh, with with fine tuning that you can calibrate that um, maybe that's the trick but um, but I did see artifacts in it so those are the pros and cons overall I'd say it's a very valuable um, viable alternative to using a GoPro um, a, a series of cameras I plan on continue to using this I'm having a lot of fun with it okay it's just fun to use um, being able recording a scene all around your vehicle and be able to pick out parts is gives you almost unlimited um, ability to, to do edits and things offline and just see different things and um, you know I find myself as I look through the scenery just picking up things I didn't even recognize when I was riding which is kind of cool so I'm having a lot of fun with it I'm gonna continue to use it instead of the GoPro I'm gonna move forward with with this as an alternative um, so it's pretty good so now we'll jump right into it but that's kind of the bottom line or the summary up front uh, for you guys that don't want to watch the rest of the video and I'll jump in here and show you kind of what I've got and uh, how I made it work Hi guys, I want to talk a little bit about my, uh, my new uh, Instagram 360 uh, test that I just ran. Um, so this is the Instagram 360 Twin Edition. This is kind of what you get. Um, you get the camera itself, you get an extra module for it, a protector, and you get a housing for it. Um, the camera itself, um, right now I've got the 360 module. It's got three pieces. It's got a base here, this is red. It's got kind of the computing side of it, which has got a little two inch screen it looks like right here. Um, and it's got then the module and what you can do is you can unsnap um, the base uh, and you can have different bases they last uh, those batteries last about an hour each and what you can do is you can uh, you can you can take the 360 module and you can snap in like a 4k module and um, and so this is essentially if you, if you do this the snap in the 4k module uh, you snap it to the base and if you do that you essentially have a GoPro and, um, and so it, it actually is almost the same form factor as a GoPro. It's waterproof, um, but they do, don't claim waterproofness until you put it under this, into this cage here. And this cage uh, acts as the mount point, you use a GoPro mount, and it kind of keeps it, keeps it all together. But the cool thing I like about this um, is in addition to this modularity, is this 360 module uh, shoots an entire uh, entire hemisphere around at 100, 360 degrees around you and what that allows you to do is after you've taken your video and, and it's and it's basically a 5.7 K uh, video scene a sensors video scene uh, that's that's stitched together and what it does is it allows you to pick like a standard GoPro view like you would get out of this this 4k module here or GoPro and um, you can you can look anywhere in the scene at any time so you can kind of drag the cursor just like you have a little viewport around the screen and I'd like that because on my side by side if I want to show a rock outcropping or I want to show something in front of the vehicle or I want to show another vehicle running next to me I just kind of uh, use the cursor to slew over and I can totally shoot that in the slew back to the front so that's kind of cool the other piece that you can get is this selfie stick and the selfie stick is how I mounted it on my, um, on my first test on the on the uh, vehicle I mounted this to the bumper and if you use this invisible selfie stick what it does is the camera will digitally remove the stick real time and make it invisible in the scene I don't know how they do it but it's very impressive and it makes it look like your camera is is, is a drone it's floating in front of the vehicle so um, you'll see that in some of my videos so that's pretty cool the only bad thing is this fisheye does get dusty so if you're if you're leading the front of a, a group um, you'll pick up dust and uh, and so it actually has a dust protector here. They make some they make some accessories. They make these dust covers that are lenses that fit over this that protect uh, protect these these this whole module. And I think I would buy those. Um, I think I actually am going to buy those because um, these look do look kind of fragile. And I think having those protectors on um, would help. In the software, if you put those protectors on, there are little lenses that go over the top. There's there's a setting that you use so that it can do the, the digital stitching of the, of the uh, two hemispheres together, um, recognizing that it's got those, uh, got those covers on. So, uh, so this is it. So why, why am I switching out? So, you know, I've got this GoPro here, and quite frankly, I'm just sick of the GoPro. Uh, this, uh, this is the buggiest camera I've ever have. Um, the, uh, the, the desktop software is no longer really supported. It's hard to, it's, 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 it's hard to get, the version's old. Um, they're, they're pushing everybody towards the iPad editing and, and uh, cell phone editing. Um, that doesn't work for big files for me anyway, because you're having to move everything across the network to get it into Premiere or whatever, our, our, um, our director or whatever um, uh, video editing tools you use. Um, so, 
so it's not very good. It's very, very buggy. Um, you can't power it externally without it just completely kicking off. I've had tons of issues trying to trying to keep it powered real time um, while I'm using it. Um, it just randomly cuts on and off. It freezes. Uh, I've, I've done firmware upgrade after firmware upgrades. I'm just, I'm just completely sick of this camera. And others, I think, have had about the same kind of issues. I was, there was no way I was going to jump to a nine. So this is an eight black, um, our Hero Edition eight. And then, and then what I want to do is use this module to replace that. They do make, by the way, a one inch Lecta module, which is really nice. Um, it's about two hundred dollars more, but you, can, but you can get that module on, and it'll turn it into a really, really high quality four K four K camera. So. Anyway, so this is it. I'll talk a little bit more about the camera and how I used it and how I mounted it uh, in this next clip. Okay, this is a little bit about how I have the actual um, camera mounted. I went ahead and I took, for this test, I took uh, the invisible selfie stick and <laughs> kind of duct taped it and then used zip ties to make sure it was going to stick uh, to my front bumper. And I kind of wanted, uh, if you can think of where your eyes are pivoting, you know, I, I kind of envision you know, a, a location that's just kind of slightly above the fender. That way I can see down around the wheel. I can see from the front. It gives it almost like a drone effect. Um, the software in the camera will remove, digitally remove the selfie stick. So if you look at my videos, that is completely gone. What is still there, though, is the shadow on the ground. So as, as, as I'm moving across the ground, you'll still see the shadow of a selfie stick with the camera on it sticking up. And, of course, you see the camera. One important thing is you do not tilt the camera on the selfie stick. To make the selfie stick disappear, you got to keep it vertical. And so if you're using a 365 degree, that doesn't matter because you're taking imagery all the way around the camera anyway. It doesn't matter if it's tilted in, you know, in the direction that you want to point or not. It's going to capture everything. And so if you just do that, mount it like that, it will remove the selfie stick. And you can see the camera here. It's in its protective frame. I've got the fisheye module. Um, attached to it. It's pretty dusty. Um, the first clip I did, I was following someone and uh, this became, this became really, got a lot of dust on it. So that's one of the disadvantages. Later, I did a test where I actually mounted it above my visor. I like that position as well. It's a little different aspect, but, uh, but that's kind of how it mounted. So I had it, I ran this for three days off in pretty rugged terrain and it held up fine. This camera is very, very light. It's, it's lighter. It feels lighter than a GoPro. And so even though it kind of vibrated, it didn't make any difference. Um, it didn't shake loose. I did put some duct tape on the joints because this, this telescope's out. So I could have telescoped this on up higher or lower if I wanted to. Uh, but that does slip if you don't kind of duct tape down to the joints. And so you see a, a, a duct tape joint right here. And you see one right here where I've, where I've kind of duct taped down. So that's how I have, my, uh, that's how I have my, my camera actually mounted to the vehicle while I ran these tests. It worked out pretty well. I think permanently I won't keep it this way. Um, I think I'll probably mount it above my visor because that'll let me clean the lens. I can reach up there with a rag and just kind of wipe it off like I do with my GoPro now. Um, and also I can power it easier that way. I actually have a power USB-C that's up around my visor. Um, here, I, I literally, when the battery's dead, I'm done. So I have basically an hour or 50 minutes or so of runtime uh, under this configuration right here before I have to get out and change the battery. I guess I could run a USB-C wire up to that. I, I, I don't want to go through all that trouble. So anyway, let's kind of have it mounted. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use the Insta360 desktop software. They call this a studio software that runs on your PC. Um, the app software is very, very similar. As a matter of fact, you can do a little more on the app software as you actually can on the studio version. Uh, but the studio version is good for dealing with big files, and um, that, so I actually, actually happen to have one. So we're going to open a file, and I'm going to carry you through the process of actually editing in a clip. Um, I posted a few to the internet, um, and if you guys have seen those, then you know, you'll see how I kind of result, how I kind of generated those. Um, so what I do is I've got my Insta360 video files on my local hard drive. I'm going to go ahead. I ran the Insta360 Studio program. I go up under File, go Open Files. Um, your your camera is going to generate two files. It'll generate an LRV file and a video file. You want to click Edit the video file. So I'm going to load that, open this up, and uh, it starts playing when you open it. I'm going to go up here. It's got Live View and it's got Free Capture. I'm going to click on Free Capture. This allows me to insert keyframes and do all kinds of edits. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the video scene. So at the bottom you see a bar here, and that that little those little icons is the same as you see in Adobe Premiere and other things. It allows you to to actually trim the video. It's the same thing you see on the Apple software. Um, I'm going to pick a scene and let's see. Let's go up to oh here's a good one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a scene where I'm kind of heading up uh, to the right of 
the hill climb at Sandam up to Tower Three, and that looks like it's about right here. Um, I'm going to tell it to, I'm going to move the trim bar so that it starts the video at about right here. I'll tune it in a minute, and then once I get to the top of that area, I'm going to yeah, about right here. We'll end it, and so I'm going to pull in. Uh, the trim and so now I've got a nice little trim video. I'm going to zoom out so I can see more detail in that and you hit the little arrows, you hit the little magnifier on the left uh, to the minus and that gives you the zoom out and there you can see my, my little trim setting is now zoomed in. So now I've got, here's my region to work with. It's going to end about right here and um, maybe a little further I want it to end. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, I'll tell it to go back to the beginning so here we are back at the beginning. If I play that, let's see where I actually start moving. Ah, looks like it's a little ways where I actually start moving. Let's see here, maybe maybe about right. There's 31, 32. Okay, it looks like I'm starting to move at 32. I'll go ahead and pick just a little more so I know we're moving right there. So now I've fine-tuned it. Let's see if that, yep, so that's movement. So now what I want to do is I want to pick where I, in the scene I'm looking. And here's here's the beauty about the 360 video. So I can grab the center of the screen and I can drag it. And as you can see, I can literally see 360 degrees around the vehicle. I can see everything to the left, to the right. I can just pick whatever scene I want. And I can zoom in and out of the camera. I'm using my wheel button on my mouse to actually zoom in and out. I can zoom all the way down. There's my headlight. I can zoom over here. There's my right bumper. Um, yeah, I can zoom on myself, or I can zoom zoom back, way back, um, so that we're like fisheye <laughs> lens, or I can zoom in. So I'll pick like about right here. I'm going to go ahead and drop a uh, drop a, a what they call a keyframe, and a keyframe lets me pick where I want the video and what I want the camera settings to look like at any point uh, during the clip. And that's this little icon over here on the left side. It looks like a, a bullseye. I'm going to click that, mark as keyframe. And on the left, you'll see it's got some settings. And so it's got right now, it's got a 78 degree field of view that I've picked. Um, you can see the angle I'm looking at, um, the tilt angle, pan angle. You can actually do things like roll, all that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it start with looking at me and my son and, and the razor here. I'm going to let it go for just a few seconds here. I'm going to center it a little bit. I'm going to drop another keyframe just to keep it centered. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is going to drop yet another keyframe. Now what I want to do is I want to start panning around to the other side. I'm going to center that up. And over just a couple of seconds, I'm going to pan all the way now to uh, to my buddy who's now starting to go up. And this time when I drop a keyframe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And this makes it more natural. This makes it look more like a GoPro. I'm going to pick like 70 degree field of view. And so now uh, I'm going to be, I'm looking at my buddy and and uh, we're just going to follow him. So hit play. So now we're following my buddy. He's going up in his razor. There he is. I want to keep it centered though, so I'm going to drop another keyframe. I'm going to move the scene around a little bit. Hit play. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here because I want to track my buddy who's going up the hill. There, you can have it track objects. Like right here is this, uh, is this called deep track feature. And what I can do is I can click on that, and right there is my buddy. And if I put a little square around him and say start tracking, what will happen is, is it will move the camera to him and start tracking. So we're going to go ahead and click that. So there it is. It's starting to track my buddies. He's going up the hill. So what that's going to do is it's going to cause us to kind of be focused on him as he's climbing up the hill. And, and it lost track, so that's okay, though. So let me go back a little bit and hit play, and you'll see that happening. So now as I'm moving, boom, the camera's now tracking my buddy as he's going up the hill. Okay, and you see me stop, and then we lose track because he kind of gets too far out. So now we'll st uh, I'm holding here to wait to go up the hill. I'm going to pause right here because now I want to look back at myself as I start to go up the hill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a keyframe right here, and I'm going to play just a couple of feet here, and then I'm going to turn around and drop another keyframe. And on the second keyframe, I'm going to zoom around and I'm going to zoom out. So now you see the whole vehicle. Now I'm going to hit play. Okay, I'm going to drop another keyframe. And now I'm going to drop a keyframe to zoom back up the hill, look back up the hill. 
And again, now that I'm zoomed out, looking really far ahead, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Now I'm at like a let's try to pick a around 70 degree field of view. There we go. A 70 degree field of view. And we're gonna just go up the hill here. As I'm going up the hill, I want to keep it centered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit um, pause when we get to the top, and I'm gonna set yet another keyframe when it starts kind of getting off center. Here we go. So I'm gonna drop another keyframe, move the camera up a little bit, hit go. Just kind of watch it climb to the top. Kind of move it, center it up again, drop another keyframe, hit go. Now I'm going to pause. I'm going to drop a keyframe because I'm going to look back at the vehicle again. So this time I'm going to zoom back at me. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to play it for just a couple of seconds. Drop another keyframe. Play that for a couple of seconds. Drop another keyframe and then look ahead. And I'll, remember I got to zoom in. I'm about at 90. I'm going to zoom back, to, back out to about 70 degrees. And as we get to the top, I want to look down at the rocks. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click another keyframe. I'm going to tilt down. So now I'm looking right in front of the vehicle down at the ground. Seeing all the rocks right there. Now I'm going to look back at the tower. So I hit pause. Drop another keyframe. Look over here at the tower. And what I can do is I can actually track my buddy. So I'll go ahead and put a little circle around him. So they start tracking. And... Uh, Hit play. Whoop, oh, sorry. Track, here we go. May have been too much light here. Okay, so there as we're going across, we're tracking him now. Tell it to stop track. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, that's far enough. And I'm going to move in my trim. I'm going to move the trim back. Oh, back to right here. And I'm going to tell it to go back to the beginning of the trim. So now let's see what that whole entire video clip looks like. I'm going to go ahead and put play. See me looking at myself. Boom. Look back up at my friend there as he's going. And again, this is 360 degree video. I'm not, the camera's staying fixed. I'm not moving anything on the camera. This is all done electronically by just uh, post processing. There's my friend going up the hill, going up the trail next to Sandam. I stop here to, wait to make sure he's clear in the hill. Okay. Then it's going to zoom back to me, pan back to me, my son, zoom back up the hill, climb back up the hill here. And let's see what happens. Should center back up. It's going to hit the next keyframe and center back up. Okay. And then what should happen is, is it should uh, center a little bit as we get towards the top again. And then you'll see me look down a little bit. Um, at the ground. So there's the next center. I look back at myself. Okay, now we're tracking. Now I look back up the hill. Then I'm going to look down. You can see now I'm looking down in front of the vehicle, looking at the rocks. Boom. Now I go back up to my friend and let's track on my friend who's at the top. So we're tracking my friend now who's up at the top. So that's it. That's the way you do a video. So now that I've got this video clip, I can export that back out and I go up here to where it says export at the top right. I click export. Um, I can pick the resolution that I want this thing to export out at. 264, 265 are the two, two choices that you can really use. I pick 265, smaller files, better resolution, uh, and, then, and then give it a name and then click on, um, click on OK and that'll export it out. So a couple of other things. Um, the stabilization is actually electronic. Uh, it's done post-process, um, so that's what you see over on the right up here under stabilization. You can lock the direction as while well, it's doing stabilization. Um, you can buy lens guards for the camera, and if you do that, you click over here on lens guards, and it makes sure it stitches the scenes correctly. Um, there's different settings for uh, stitching that you can do. Um, you can set a logo and have it drop a logo on the scene as you're generating the video. Some, some fairly, some, some kind of clever things. So this is the basic stuff that you can do while you're in the uh, 
in the uh, Insta360. The app version lets you do overlays, and it'll actually, if you, if you use the GPS options, it'll it'll drop the, the overlays for speed and elevation and all that, but you have to be using the phone or the GPS remote uh, to get that GPS data encoded down in it. So anyway, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of how you use the Insta360 to actually generate a cool uh, scene from your 360 camera. And with that, I'll go ahead and wrap it up and give a quick summary here. You know, I think overall the uh, Insta360 One R is a great camera, especially to get into 360 video for off-roaders. The ability to look around your vehicle, look at at the person driving the vehicle, to be able to look in front of the vehicle, look at objects as you pass. You just kind of pick whatever you want out of the view, entire view around the camera is a pretty awesome thing to do. There is a learning curve with this, so expect to be able to spend some time in the apps learning how it works. you got to figure out how to mount it to your vehicle. Um, like I say, I mount mount on the bumper. You can mount it on the above the head the, uh, where the uh, uh, visor normally goes. That works well, too. I think you can expect to spend anywhere from around 400 bucks just for the base camera uh, and maybe a memory card and a, and a selfie stick to upwards around $600 if you get the twin version and also get uh, the GPS remote. Still affordable uh, solution, great alternative to a GoPro. Um, the links are included in the comment section below if you'd like to look at buying it yourself. Uh, I hope you guys found this material interesting and we'll sign off. Thank you.